Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Tiger Tank, Tank 1 2, how are you gonna call me? I don't really care, and welcome back to World Tanks. The test server 1.10 is probably going to be released in just about maybe one or two weeks. Uh, I think they um, were targeting something with early August, mid August, and we're going to be getting the new Polish medium tanks, and I think. The creme de la creme is probably going to be the CS-63, the tier 10 brand new Polish medium tank. And that is going to be the video topic of today. I have a game recorded, or no, actually not recorded, but I have prepared it so we can afterwards check it out and take a look at the strong suits and the weaknesses of this vehicle. But before we do that, we're going to go right into the characteristics and the statistics. But First, let's take a look at this tank and just think about what it reminds you of. I think um, especially the hull of the vehicle is a very unique design that we don't really see often um, from other vehicles. Uh, because you have like the very flat and angular shaped um, hull, which then angles upwards here and you know there are a lot of angles all over the place it reminds me a little bit of the progetto 65 hull armor uh, not too much well it's not identical but it's similar at least in its uh, in its look if we compare it to the tier 9 which has much more of a you know distinctive soviet kind of um, hull you can see that it's uh, more of a unique design now as always these vehicles never existed um they were just you know, projects that maybe weren't even ever drawn on anything, just like skits, and I don't know where Wargaming got their data from, uh, but these tanks never existed. Um, well, at least the CS-63 did not exist. I'm not sure about the Boogie, the CS-44, the CS-59, and the CS-53, but... I don't think that any one of those vehicles ever existed. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to test the Boogie, the CS44, and the CS53, um, and the CS59 because of uh, a severe lack of people playing the test server, especially the lower tiers. And I can honestly get that. This is the third iteration of the test server. Everyone who has, you know, wanted to check out what's new has done that in the first week when the test server was brand out new. I kind of missed that, but... I'm trying to do a review or a preview on the CS63 now before it goes live. So very first, a very small disclaimer right here. My crew is not at 100%. You can see they're pretty damn bad. Uh, no skills whatsoever. That has to do with the fact that, unfortunately, I don't have any um, Polish medium tank drivers. Because I think on the Poodle, I don't even know what I have on the Poodle. Um... Actually, I do, but I did not train them over. Anyway, it's not that important um, because this vehicle is quite unique in its way because it brings a new mechanic. The new mechanic is it has a, what is it, a gas-powered turbine engine or, yeah, I think it, it was something like that with two modes during mobility where you can switch around and have like top speed with turbo where you're going like 75 kilometers per hour top speed or the normal which is non-turbo which is the, the usual um, mode that you have where you can go 60 kilometers per hour now very important this vehicle and um, the equipment if you look down here the equipment that I have put on this tank is specifically for making it faster um, like basically everything in this tank is to make it faster and just you know more mobile the only thing right here is you know the turret traverse speed thing maybe that is not necessary we're just going to demount it real fast and um, just demount it and we're going to be putting on something else because on my current version the spotting is damn bad and you can see that there is a new ui for the um, ammo, consumables, and equipment slots. Uh, it looks a lot better and um, it does seem to be a lot smoother as well. I don't have as many load times that I, as I previously had in the garage. So without further ado, let's jump into the statistics, the characteristics of the vehicle, 
take a look at them then we're going to jump into the gameplay and um, then we're going to have a little bit of a, a talk at the end of um, what I think about this tank and uh, if it is good tier 10 or um, if it is not a good tier 10 you might never know so the average alpha on this vehicle is 390 this tank has a 105 millimeter gun now very interesting now new in the patch you cannot take a look at your modules in the garage you actually have to go into the tech tree where the modules are being shown and you can see it's a 105 millimeter gun with 390 alpha damage and 258 millimeters of penetration now the pen for a tier 10 medium tank 258 that's maybe average if you would compare this tank to the leopard one you can see that uh, it is lacking like 20 millimeters of uh, penetration and it's also firing ap as standard shells and uh, apcr as premium shells but i can um i can tell you guys that the uh the uh, shell velocity on the AP shell is still very good for an AP shell with 1,241, but obviously the APCR shell has better velocity of about 200 milliseconds, um, no meters per second, excuse me, meters per second in direct comparison to the AP shell. So the rate of fire and you know the gun loading time, as you can see, are not up to par because I'm not using a best crew, I'm not using butters and arms, I'm not using the best equipment for that. But basically, this tank has not the best rate of fire. Uh, I would say it's decent enough, 9.15 seconds reload time. You can buff that, you can get that down to something about 8 seconds, somewhere maybe in the higher 7 seconds with all the equipment and all the stuff. Um, but you can see it's... Um, it's decent enough. You have 46.47 uh, degrees per second gun traverse speed, um, which is decent enough. Uh, you're, you can turn your turret um, around fast enough. I think it's faster than the Leopard 1. Um, 8 degrees of gun depression, decent enough in direct comparison to the Leopard 1 and the, uh, the Action X. Um, the British tier 10 medium tank it is lacking one degree or two degrees respectively you can see the huge difference that the turbo mode makes is actually the aim time without the turbo mode you have an aim time of 2.47 seconds which is decent enough I would say but with the turbo mode it takes you a whole whopping 3.77 seconds to aim in fully now you can see that is something that they made or that they implemented to have a little bit of a balancing act because if your tank is super fast and you can still shoot like with the same accuracy you just have like the same problem that um, you'd have with the EBRs. It would make them overpowered and obviously this is a good thing and um, it will have you'll have to adapt to the playstyle. So the dispersion at 100 meters with 0.39 is pretty damn bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not the most accurate tank, but you can make do, especially with the high mobility. The DPM 2.559, 2.6K about. Uh, you can push that obviously with equipment and with brothers in arms and all that kind of stuff. But at the moment, you can see with the stock crew, it's not that. It's it's decent enough. You have 2,000 hit points on this tank, 80 millimeters of frontal hull armor, 50 on the side, 40 on the rear. Do not expect to bounce a lot of stuff on your hull. Um, the angles are kind of interesting, but you know, bouncing like anything at tier 10 with 80 millimeters of hull uh, frontal armor is very difficult, especially since the lower plate is huge. Um, but you might get some lucky bounces if you're like moving up, if you're moving down a slope. And it might just be the angle that is really, really good. Then you have 260 millimeters of frontal turret armor, 60 on the side, 40 on the rear. And um, this is probably one of the most impressive feats of this tank. You can see it's like a Soviet turret, very round. Um, it is going to be bouncing a lot of stuff from the front, but... The question is, where does the, the side turret actually start? Is like this already a side turret here? Or is this still the front part? Um, because 260 and 60 millimeters is a huge drop in turret armor. And um, you will actually see 
that the turret is quite good, but you could still get lucky penned or um, I don't know, it might just be the angle, but you'll see in the gameplay in a second. Now the mobility, this is probably the most interesting part. You have 814 engine power or horsepower for this tank. Now this is with all the equipment that I have on. And the one equipment I'm using is the plus 10% to engine power, which allows you to have plus five kilometers per hour top speed going forward. And um, what this does is actually that with the turbo mode, we have 1,265 horsepower, which is an increase of about 450 um, horsepower. That's pretty damn impressive, which allows you to accelerate a lot faster, which allows you to get up to 75 kilometers per hour, which is like the top speed of the Leopard 1. And I think it is the most similar tank uh, if you have it in the category with a Leopard 1 because of the mobility, because of the gun. But the gun is not as impressive as Leopard 1's gun is. Uh, but it has a little bit of additional armor or more armor or any armor at all that the Leopard 1 does not have. Traverse speed 51.34 degrees per second. You can turn your hull um, in a decent amount of time. And the time it takes you to switch to the engine mode is actually two seconds. That is the time where you are absolutely still. You cannot move. And um, yeah, two seconds might sound like uh, a short period of time, but it can actually cost you quite a lot of time if you get like put on the spot. Now moving on, concealment and spotting. Now the, the tank actually is going to be losing concealment when on the move, especially with the turbo mode. And uh, you can see that right here, if the vehicle is stationary with the normal mode, um, it gets 18.96% uh camo rating while on the move 14.97 and it's going to drop to 11.84 while using turbo so this tank is going to be easier spotted while it has the turbo mode on and that is another balancing act now the view range obviously on this tank uh, i do not have the best equipment on it but i'm going to be questioning uh view range is 400 meters so it's going to be okay doesn't have the 420 that the um, Leopard 1 has, but with the mobility that you have, you can probably be counted as a, maybe a, a frontline, um, more buffer, faster, medium tank slash almost scout. So having looked at all the characteristics of this tank, I think it's fair to assume that it's going to be quite fast and that it's going to be very, very strong in certain positions. So I'd say without further ado, let's jump over to the gameplay and check it out for ourselves and see if that is the correct assumption. So as you can see, we're actually playing on the map El Halouf, no sign River. Fuck, I always get those mixed up. Whatever. You can see that the, the new gameplay mechanics or the new um, communication tools that they added in are pretty damn neat. If you look into uh, at this tank, you can actually press like T, unfortunately when the replay we cannot do that, but you can press T and tell him to follow you, whatever, and he can agree or he can deny it, or he can say, you know what, the other position is more important. And what you can see is like, if you um, left click on the map, there's like a, a warning um, triangle, uh, which alerts your team where somebody might be. And um, right click, you can actually put something up to tell your team that uh, you're gonna be moving to that specific position now that's pretty damn interesting and pretty nice but let's take a look at this tank and let's see what it's capable of so yeah you start with the turbo mode obviously and uh, you just give it all give full speed at the beginning and you can see the 75 kilometers per hour and i'm already at the best or the like the one of the um, more important locations uh, where you can actually get some of the vehicles while they are crossing, especially the other medium tanks. And uh, we're already ready here and ready to set an ambush and light some things up for maybe our artillery or other vehicles that might be behind us. And this is quite essential. This is exactly how you want to play this tank if you're able to, you know, if you're playing on mines and uh, you're moving up, up the hill, um, you know, you're going to be able to be the first one there maybe just as fast as the EBRs, and um, that is certainly an advantage that you have. 
But what you're going to be lacking or what you're going to be missing is you have two seconds where you really need to turn off this turbo mode because if you do not turn off the turbo mode, you're going to be getting annihilated because your aim time is really, really bad. Unless they're right in front of you. So right here, we just got shot by the Centurion Action 10 while he was um, driving past us. And now this is quite important. I, I just wanted to um, stop this for you guys. And you can see that the Centurion Action 10 actually penetrated our turret, which is quite weird because this turret is 260 millimeters at the front, right? And this is exactly the question that I'm asking myself. It is angled right here. It's even round. It's not entirely flat. So 260 millimeters with this angle it should be enough right to withstand a, a shell from the centurion action 10 even though it has 268 millimeters of penetration so the weird thing is right now we're facing this kranwagen over there and we actually have a shot at his uh, side armor if we actually hit him right here it's going to go through definitely but he doesn't really have a shot at us except for our turn now check this out we do not hit him, and he actually manages to hit us at the turret, like right at the turret ring. And it's almost the exact same spot as the Action 10, and we just lost about half of our HP almost. So this is kind of awkward, because is this a feature, or is this like, is something not okay with this tank, or is it just a feature, because it's kind of not completely round at the bottom, where it might be like flat enough that you can put a shell through but it's kind of weird so just just be uh, sure that your turret is not impenetrable that's what i want to say if a tier 10 heavy tank and a tier 10 medium tank will be able to go through there any tier 10 tank destroyer will be able to do that as well so be careful it seems to be a weak spot at the front and to be fair I like when vehicles have weak spots or you can actually go through them with standard ammunition because they both fired standard APCR and non-premium shells. And I think that's how it's supposed to be because those overpowered Soviet tanks that just can go haul down wherever they want, they should not be in the game in that kind of sense. You should still be able to penetrate their turrets um, maybe, I don't know, 5 out of 10 shots. So that's like every second one is going in but i don't know i'm just like resting right now you can see that the standard ap shells are not good enough to go through the type 5 heavy because they only have 258 millimeters of pen um the apcr shells with 315 might be enough and you can see we are able to go through his um we're able to go through his uh upper plate right there and um, this is actually a quite a nice spot that we have. Eight degrees of compression is decent enough. It's not too bad, but it's not the 10 degrees or nine degrees that the Leopard 1 or the uh, Centurion Action 10 has. So up until this point, like the mobility is pretty damn cool. You could see that we went to a place very early on in, in the game. Um, the gun handling is kind of weak at the moment, um, especially since I don't have the best crew. But you can see that with APCR, you're going to be able to penetrate the Type 5 right here. But it's still dangerous because high explosive shells are going to be doing a lot of damage to your tank. Because generally speaking, it does not have a lot of armor. Um, I think the first game I played, I was penetrated directly by a Type 5 Heavy. And right here, if we check it out again, we get penetrated by the Type 5 Heavy again on the turret. Like actually this time around on the cupola uh, commander's hatch and I thought I was very well hidden right there and I was a little bit disappointed in that engagement or in the last couple of engagements where we did everything correct where we didn't show any of our hull and we still got punished for it uh, on our turret might just have been the, the, the angle but um, yeah so I decided to actually move away from that position because it was getting a little bit too hot there with the type 5 and a CS-63 being close uh, around there. And just in time to come around the corner, um, turn off my uh, my engine or the, the, the turbo mode and engage the EBR where I obviously bounce because it has magic armor. 
Second shot though goes through and I've changed back to AP shells and we're able to actually get the CS63 and catch him off guard. So right here, this game actually looks like it's it's been decided. We've done 2,250 uh, HP worth of damage. We unfortunately do not hit the EBR 105, but you can see that a game in Wolf Tanks is never really over until you have destroyed every single tank because it turns out that they are able to defend the northern part of the map. We just lost about two or three tanks, I think, very, very quickly. Um, but I managed to fall back, um, get into the base, you know, take up position over here on the hill um, with the, the rapid mode. And you can just see how, how quick you are, how fast you can change position. But it just leaves you very, very vulnerable right there. Um, the, the TBP, he actually spotted me and um, he was able to put a, a or fire a shot at me and I could do nothing about that because I was stationary right there because I just turned off the, uh, the turbo mode and it takes two seconds to change. So very important, if you're playing this tank, if you're playing any Polish tank with uh, medium tank with this new mechanic, always beware when to use the X button when to switch the modes because uh, it can cost you very dearly if you switch uh, at the wrong time um, but yeah you can see accuracy <laughs> not as great uh, I think what 200 meters maybe away from us and we hit the tracks unfortunate right there but that's just how the game is sometimes RNG and uh, somehow the CS63 completely vanished right there I don't see him anywhere anymore. It's super weird. I can't spot him. Now, keep in mind, my spotting at this time was like 380 meters or something like that because my crew was really, really bad. So um, maybe he had a good crew, good like um, good uh, camo and all that kind of stuff. And he just ran back up to the hill. He can do that with the turbo mode, obviously. And uh, I can no longer find him. So with 312 HP, we have turned uh, eight versus what was it eight versus um six or something like that engagement into uh four versus five engagement and uh now it was actually essential for me to get into a position where i could be of assistance to my team maybe spot something in the north because three of the tanks uh of the four or of the five tanks were in the north somewhere in the mountains and they were premium uh, medium tanks or light tanks and you can see with the just the, the the power mode with this turbo mode we're able to very quickly switch the flank go right up in there um, get to the sand dunes because i know that this um, object 277 is going to need assistance from us i get up here there's a tvp right in front of me and now I'm in a very good position because my turret actually is going to be able to bounce something this time around. And um, you can see the rate of fire is just not good enough to allow us to finish him off in time. Well, obviously I don't have the best crew and all that stuff. But thankfully we can engage and take out the EBR 105. Saving our object 277's life and, you know, picking out the most annoying vehicle in the game. The CS63 has been spotted, the E100 takes care of him, and this game has been won by us, and we just switch over to the mode. And you can just see the bloom of the reticle, it's huge. It's really gigantic. And you, you can just see how long it takes, look at the aim time, <laughs> how, how long it still takes, we're all, you know, switching the mode and all. And uh, we are able to finish off the last tank, getting us two kills, 3,000 damage, losing about 1,700 HP in the process. Um, I'd say it was a good game, but it also shows you that the armor on this vehicle is not really to be crossed, especially on the turret. It's really weird. We had three penning shots that cost us 1,600 HP, and it was all on the turret. While this turret at the front has supposedly 260 millimeters, and we still got penned. The one that uh, the Type 5 fired at us was probably at an angle, so I can understand that he penetrated like the top part right there. But those two shots right here, that those went through, hmm, okay, kind of critical in my opinion. But 
I'd say it's a very unique kind of vehicle. It seems to be playing like a Leopard 1 um, without the best gun handling that the Leo 1 has, um, but with a little bit of added armor. So it might just be a Leo 1 in like very fast that can go up front to a close to mid range engagement, still be quite reliable with its gun. And you know, um, in case it gets really hot, can just dash out and go away or start like a, an a offensive on the flank somewhere. What I've noticed is that not a lot of people were playing the CS63 at the end of the test server. Um, maybe it's because um, everyone has figured it out already out or, you know, tried it already out. But um, it could also be the case that uh, maybe people are not as excited about this tank as they were with other vehicles. And that might just be a, a good point that um, it might be balanced. Um, you know, balanced tier 10s is very important for us. It's very important for the longevity of the game. And, um, you know, adding new vehicles is always cool. But if they add them and they're super broken, obviously it's going to hurt the game in the long time. So uh, what can I say about that? I can only say that uh, I hope Wargaming, you know, uh, get the, the right kind of um, stats for this tank. And that... Uh, wait... One second, I just want to take a, a screenshot, but somehow screenshots don't work. Weird. I can understand that, and um, yeah, I, I just hope that um, I just hope that this tank will be balanced when it's released. At the moment, I'd say it's a pretty damn interesting vehicle. I'll be very excited looking at the tier nine, at the tier ten, uh, tier nine, tier eight, and the tier seven, and the tier six. We know that the uh, mechanic is only being introduced at tier 8, so um, we'll have to see how that is going to be looking down in the lower tiers. I wasn't able to play those tanks, but I might still try, but I'm not sure if I can make a preview video on these vehicles in time uh, so that you guys are informed. But I'll try and um, I'll inform you guys uh, during or about the process, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.